Hey guys, how's it going? Fred here, AF Math and Engineering, and we're almost done. Uh, if you've been following the series, uh, I just laid out the questions that we've done so far. Uh, we did our bending moment diagram, we found the moment of inertia, we found the flexural stresses in the top and bottom of the beam, and the final step to this question is going to be uh, drawing them. Okay, and this is fairly straightforward. Uh, there's only one little thing that you have to remember for your test. Uh, if you've got these values correct, uh, which I'm assuming you will have because you've been watching our videos and you've been practicing really hard, right? Right, guys? All right. So it's, this is just the simplest part, and it's just finishing up the question and making sure that you really uh, you know your stuff. All right. So uh, the way we draw the flexural stresses is actually very simple. What we're going to do is redraw the cross-section. You don't need to dimension it. I mean, maybe your professor wants that. We didn't have to. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a straight line here, okay? And we're going to look for our sigma top that we solved for initially, okay? So our sigma top that we solved for initially was 835.6, we'll say, uh, megapascals and in compression, okay? And that's at the top of the beam if you remember our definition of flexural stresses. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top of the beam and we're going to draw a line. And that line is extending out of the line that we drew and what that's going to do is it's going to form essentially it's going to form a triangle it's going to form a linear distribution of that stress okay so that's what that's going to look like okay now uh, the way we need to represent a compressional stress when we're doing when we're drawing the flexural stresses is we're going to draw some arrows uh, inside of this triangle and the arrows are going to be pointing towards the cross section okay towards the cross section implies that the stress is a compressional stress all right so let's start by doing that okay that implies that the stress is a compressional stress okay and what is our stress well let's draw it right up here you know what i'm just going to draw it down here so we can make it a little bit bigger Don't forget the units. And that is referring actually to this point here, not the center. I just drew it down here so we could see it a bit bigger, but usually you just draw it up on the top here because that's the maximum stress at the top, okay? Next, same thing for the bottom. And just to draw it a little bit to scale, so you know our professor's, uh, eh, it's not really to scale, it's fine. He won't be impressed, just kidding. All right, so to represent the tensional force, or the, sorry, the tensional stress, we're going to angle the arrows facing away from the cross section. That's going to uh, represent a tensional stress, all right? And right down on the, the top here where the maximum is, we are going to include our stress. Now, you don't have to put comp compression or tension here because you've already indicated it with the arrows. I mean, I'm sure it's not a big deal if you do. However, um, you know, yeah, I, I would just leave it with that, and you're good. Okay, so that's it. We just drew the flexural stresses, nice and simple. And now the question asks us, finally, last part of the question, find the factor of safety. Now, we discussed this earlier, obviously. Uh, the factor of safety is whatever we're measuring. Oops, allowable over actual, okay? And when we're calculating the factor of safety, we're going to calculate the largest based on the largest flexural stress, okay? Uh, the reason for that is that is our critical stress that we wanted to, de to design for. We're not going to choose the smaller one and design for that because if there's a bigger stress on the beam, I mean, that, you know, that's, it's a little bit useless to design for the smaller stress, right? So we want to design for the maximum stress on the beam, which is 1,229 MPa, okay? Now, uh, in the question, it always has to be given if they want you to find the factor of safety, they gotta give you the allowable, right? We discussed that before, and the allowable is given as 150 megapascals, okay? Just looking at this right now, I'm, I think we can all see that this is not gonna be safe, but let's just do it anyway, because the question asks us to. We cancel those units, what do we get? A factor of safety of 0 0.12, so terrible. This beam is not safe. Not 
safe. Okay, so that, uh, that concludes our bending moment diagram section. Uh, just to, you know, go over a little bit of, of what we covered and, you know, I did that at the start of the video, but, you know, we, we drew our bending moment diagram, we found the moment of inertia, we found the cross-sectional, uh, the centroid uh, in, in finding that moment of inertia, we found the flexural stresses in the beam, we drew them and we found the factor of safety and found that the beam is unsafe, okay? And we did all that based on our initial bending moment diagram, okay? So I know I keep saying it, but practice those bending moment diagrams because if, uh, if you get that wrong, there's no point in knowing the rest of the stuff because it'll be wrong anyway. So make sure you get that right. Uh, practice, 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 and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching, guys.